So this week we've got some hints and tips, we've got some tools that I'll use. We are back to jobbing now in the videos. Hopefully I can show you a quicker way to do some things, hopefully help you out along the way. So we've got a little bit of everything this week. We've got some plumbing, we've got some gas, we've got a boiler breakdown and we've got a little tip in there for you as well. I just want to say thank you to everyone for your support so far. Honestly, I really appreciate it. If you haven't subscribed, hit the button for me. It would really, really help me out. If you've got any questions on anything, just drop them in the comments. I'll do my best to answer them. Like the video. Yeah, let's take a look at another day in my life. To get started, we've got a breakdown on this valence. Now, the customer is having to put the pressure up to over three to keep it on. The same thing again, F75 fault on it, which is very, very common on a valence. Uh, so what we're going to do is get the case off and we're just going to have a look inside there find the pressure sensor which is located just below the heat exchanger to get better access to take the flu toy out and you get in there now always on the break then if i've drained the boiler i will check the expansion vessel just to make sure it's charged it's good practice to do that you see this one was absolutely fine and one thing we'll do as well after we've checked it some leak detector on there just to make sure the schrader valve isn't passing so everything was good with that now to get that pressure sensor out what i normally do is get a screwdriver in there get the clip started and i get my bent nose pliers in there and i'll pull that clip out and that's the only thing that holds it in just give it a wiggle and that will come out now the failure on these is they get blocked up so something to do with the water quality in the system there they have got a magnet clean and that so we will advise them on that new one just get the new o-ring on there bit of silicon grease then push it in then the fun part is getting that clip in sometimes you just can't line it up and it'll spring out and drop inside the casing but it was lucky on that one got it straight in now you can actually test these this is the old one we've reconnected it i'm going to turn the power on it's all drained down so really we should get no pressure in that boiler but we turn it on you can see it's reading and it's got about 1.5 bar pressure so yeah it's a faulty pressure sensor it's a good way to check them so what we can do now is disconnect the old one and put the electrics on the new one and when we put that back on now, the pressure will read zero. So I'm just going to start filling it up. You can see there, showing 0.1. And there we go. Once it gets to the right pressure, the border will kick back in. Then we can get that flu toilet back on. And that's the repair all done on that. But we have got to do 26.9 uh, checks on this now. Because we have took the case off. Another common fault on these, that diverter leaks. So we did check that. The rusting in there is from a previous leak on the diverter. They've already had that done. We're just going to get the case on, then we're going to do our fully analysed check. So to get this service mode, top two buttons, press that. Press the play icon, then you want to put in code 17. Press the play icon again, top right button, till you get to P. P01 is maximum, P02 is minimum. So we're just going to check the minimum and maximum, just to make sure all the readings are okay and the board is working safely. So the maximum is all fine. Put that into minimum, make sure all that's okay. And yeah that was the end of that one always put a stick on the board as well because they get a breakdown in the future they know who to call now now this next one this is a gas fire you see that all the tapes come away so it's a bit of a dangerous situation at the moment so what we're going to do is four screws on these type of fires just in case you ever come across one just take them four screws out disconnect the handle then you can pull the case up and out and that'll give us access to the fire then what we're going to do is disconnect the gas underneath this wasn't fixed to the wall neither which was another problem then we're just going to take the radiance out just so they don't get damaged or broke so if you can see as i've taken the fire out the tape just gone it's absolutely gone so you imagine the fumes can come out of there i'll show you another thing you gotta watch for especially when putting seals on fires let's get this fire out of the way and i'll show you so if you look at the plate where it seals you've got gaps here so it's not fully sealing there so what i'm going to do these joints here i'm going to put fire cement in so it's a full seal then and then the gaps here as well just so that then both sides is completely sealed so the tape ain't going to go in them grooves so now i'm just going to fill them mortar lines there and make sure it seals back that's what i'm going to be using a bit of fire cement and just put it in the gaps like that really easy to use stuff this is so it don't take long to go off neither so you're just gonna get that in there all the way around so that's all sealed up now you know if we've took that out that's just a bit of tin that was pop riveted on isn't correct um it's all starting to come away from the wall so 
that plate will actually fit perfect there. This is what it was designed for, for it to be wall hung. Um, so what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna wall hang it. So what I'm gonna do is cut the skirt in there, cut the skirt in there so I can get this half back, alter that gas pipe, just to get it up and into the fire. All right, so we've just got the multi tool cut off the skirt in there, cut off the skirt in there. And that is going to go right back now, so that looks better. All this sealed up with fire cement, so that stuff don't take long at all to go off. But you can see, that's how it's supposed to be. That's how it's always been. Someone's come along and just put that plate in there to try and get it on the floor. Um, with them rivets, it just wasn't sealed at all. You'd have to put all tape around here, seal all this. It just didn't look right. Um, didn't sit right with me. So I agreed with the customer. Let's mount it on the wall. Uh, back to where it was. We can adjust that gas pipe. That's all sealed now. So let's get the clothes plate on with the tape. You see, I've taped all that up. Good few layers on that, to be fair, because it is pretty hard to get a st uh, stick to. But we've it's like metal on metal there, metal on metal there. So the tape has a dip, but I just wanted to see belt and braces just a lot of tape on there. I can trim them ends if I want to. But I just want to make sure that that ain't going nowhere. So now I can hang the fire and look at adjusting that probe. I will do a flue pull test, just light it, put it in there. Make sure it all passes. Um, go and check it out, so but yeah, I'll do that. Then let's get the fire back on the wall. So they're my commercial bombs. <laughs> Give out some white smoke. I accidentally picked these up instead of the regular ones, but they are orange, they're easy to see, so yeah, we can uh, go outside and check that. Make sure that's okay. Yeah, but the pipe work there. Um, I don't know if you noticed it. Did you notice this? That is a bit of 8mm shoved into 10mm. And we call that a Whitney Houston on this channel. But because I was all to the pipe anyway, I thought, you know what, cut it out, bit of an extension piece, curve it up into the fire, and put more tape on the top as well. So I've got about four layers of tape on there. Because um, it is a bit hard to get the stickiness on here. Um, but that is solid, absolutely solid. Fixed onto the wall now. Last thing to do on this now is um, test the gas. Uh, so we'll go down and do that. Just doing the tightness test now. That is all passed. But don't forget, there's two places you've got to do LDF. In one around your nipple. Get some LDF on your nipple. And the handle. So the last two things you disturb that to turn it on. So just make sure that isn't leaking. LDF the nipple as well. There is something else in there that uh, is a bit concerning. If you know what it is, put it in the comments. Mm. Gas is all fine. Let's do a spinach test. And normally on the old side it tells you where to put your your match. So we'll do a, a spinach test, get the fire back front back on and uh, see what that looks like. Um, I'll say you can see that tape at the top, but I'd rather it be safe and not come off again because that tape that you seen earlier was only about eight to nine months old. Did that, so yeah, plenty of tape on that. Yeah, I mean, of course, at the bottom of you, really. Like the tape at the bottom. Not a lot I could do with the gas pipe, but that on our now that's safe for the customer. Just a very quick tip for you guys. Um, so I'm just doing a service on this ideal oil mini, and we need to clean the filter and recharge the expansion vessel. Obviously, you can see the filters in a very awkward position. That's a washing machine arms. If it's perfect, onto them type of filters with three quarter connection, so I can get down here into my bucket and recharge the vessel. So yeah. Always get a washing machine on. And some people say you should get like an electric pump, but to be honest with you, I like the workout. Get your steps in, don't you? So now, I'm sticking to a foot pump. Yeah, that is a handy very little tip if you've got a filter in an awkward position. So we're going to be updating and changing this radiator here, older than me. So yeah, we've got the system drained down. Uh, I'm just going to show you a couple of tools that we use and a way to work out the height of your radiator when you're replacing one. So, yeah, it's all drained down. Let's get this old one on. Right, so, first tools and plumb tubs. Got one either side because I'm going to disconnect the valves. Yeah, these are really good. You don't think you get two for about a tenner. So, yeah, always recommend them. So, let's get these valves off. Then we can get this radiator in. Now, I can hear you all now saying use a span and. I just find it easier to use grips. The valves are coming out anyway. It's going to be brand new valves. So, I ain't really bothered if I scratch the, uh, the nuts. Still a bit of water left in there. It's been on training day now for about 10 minutes, but you always seem to get a bit of water left in the rad. Uh, just going to do the other side exactly the same. So these are another handy tool to have. These are plumb thumbs. Now if these tighten into the radiator and they actually just stop them from leaking as you take them out. So 
let me show you these works we have got both sides we've got uh, the fat side that we've got using the thin side so half inch three quarter so yeah let me show you these work so i'll get this valve out of the way i'm just going to use the half inch side that will just go onto there be careful not to cross thread it it's plastic onto metal i'm pretty sure i've done this one so the thread is a bit hard to start but let's get that on There we go, that's it locked in place. You can actually use that as a handle as well. I don't on it, I always pick it from the rad, but yeah, people say you can use it from handles. And this side, she is the bigger side. That should just tighten onto there. There we go. Yeah, and I'm going to get this valve off now and get in there and tighten that up properly. Yeah, uh, that should be ready to come out now. Plum forms at the ready, and what we're going to do is just lock off the vent. So we haven't got an open end on it, but I'll still, before I have it, I'll, I'll still pick this up and flip it over. Um, but yeah, then plum forms just stop any muck coming out the bottom of them. Dust sheet, the, the whole house, I've got to put that bit of dust sheet over there. Uh, all downstairs, I've got dust sheets in here. Let's get this out. Right, so I should be able just to uh, lift it up, and away it comes. Just like that, like I say, then plum forms in the bottom, and go worry about anything you do on carpet on the dust sheet. So it'll just stop it all coming out, but so there's force of a bit. I will flip this over before I carry it downstairs. There we go. See, on this one, I think they've just fixed it in the nick of time. I oh, had a leak there, all from the top, one down, and all the other. Mm. Yeah, it's an old one anyway, so me want to be a lot more efficient. So we've just got to get the brackets off, of course, they're going to be. Flatheads. It's one there. One. Oh god. Well, that one flathead's been keeping that radiator on there. And two on there. Just a bit of advice as well. When you take your old radiator out, take your plum forms right out. I nearly lost a set of them. Um I left them in the rad. Then I tap around, come round the corner. Well, I quickly run down, got them back. So yeah, let's get these uh, old brackets off and we'll look at lining up the new one. Oh, profile school, eh? Them. A bit of cork or something. There's a washer. It works. A bit of cork behind it as well. See where the plaster is just uh plastered around the brackets, but that's a pretty decent wall to be fair. We've just gotta make sure we cover the two old bracket lines up. Um that pole I'm gonna have to cut because yeah, that edge is gonna go straight onto the old one. I wouldn't want to put that straight on anyway, just cut that down. So I'm gonna just cut that down and start again. Right, so new radiators in place. Um what I've done is where the back of the bracket is i'll just put a mark on top of the radiator either side when i put it against the wall i'll just mark the wall where that mark is and i'll then that's the position that i want and then brackets so i can get that radiator out of the way i'll just find it up there roughly where the pipe's gonna go and so i'm probably gonna extend them pipes up anyway so i ain't really bothered about the height at the moment uh so yeah let's just mark the wall and get this out of the way so we know where our bracket is going to go now. We've got a line there, line over there. And what I've done is put the bracket on the back of the radiator. And what I'm going to do is measure from the bottom of the bracket to the bottom of the radiator, which is 90 mil. And what I'm going to do is roughly where I want the radiator, I'm going to put my tape measure on there. Let me switch angles and it'll make a bit more sense. All right, so I'll get the tape measure and this radiator is 600, 600 high. All right, put it on your wall, wherever you want it. So that's going to be at the top of my radiator and at the bottom of the 600 is going to be the bottom. So I want the distance between the skirting and the window ledge roughly about the same. So what you can do is find the centre of the wall and put your tape measure 300 with centre of the wall. And that'll give you the even height between the two. So there's the centre that I wanted, just there. Just took a measurement from the... the Skirting to the bottom of the sill, halved it, and it was there, put 300 there, so that's going to be the top of the radiator, just there. And the bottom down here, 600, all I'm going to do is mark 90 mil up, which is going to be 510, just there. And that's where I want the bottom of my bracket, and that should be near the centre of the wall. Alright, so we know where our bracket's going to lie and the height of it now. So we're going to put that side against the wall. 
like that. Getting close to the wall. If you put it that side, it's going to come further off the wall. That's for single panels. This is a double panel single convector. Line up with the bottom and the line going up. Then we're going to mark the holes. So we're going to mark the adjusters, top and bottom, and a securing one here. Some free holes on both sides. Right, screw plugged. Don't forget these. These are anti rattles that come with the rad. Just little plastic lugs. And go on there, stop the radiator from rattling. All right, and if we've got that right, should be able to drop that radiator on and it'll be exactly where we want it. Let's give it a try. There we go, see on the wall. So look at the even gap between the two. Um, a lot of people put them lower, but I asked cut them out. Said, said put it in the middle of the wall, so. Yeah, just gotta uh, adjust the pipe work, get that in there. The towel still using that rapid blue stuff. And you can see, it will just literally go in, finger tight. That's it. And you just leave that. And it'll go off in about five, 10 minutes. Should be able to get that one, but this side. Too far away. I'll show you how we can sort that out. So this side's gone perfectly back on. Lovely. Absolutely great. This side, see, I've had to put this extension bar in. And you can get these from your local plumbing merchants. They're just a lot bigger than the ones that come with you. And so the customer didn't want all the floor taken up and that adjusting. Just said put an extension bar in. So, yeah, that should. Clean that off. Extend the pipe. Put the valve on there. Should be job done on that one, near enough. Right, so just put a bit of a stab, 50ml cop up there, got the valve on. Yeah, just use the extension bar there, just extends it a bit. I'm just going to tighten that on there. Right, so that one's all done, all in, tightened up. Now I've got to say, make sure you put some jointing compound on your nuts. I did a video a few weeks back, someone said, Oh, I don't even bother using jointing compound, but I have now slight weeps appear on nuts and olives when I haven't used that. Not very often, but it's just belt and braces. But yeah, that side's in. That side's in. Put the vent plug on and that. Just got uh, another valve in the opposite room, same as that one to do. So yeah, this is the valve I've got to replace. Nice, oh, easy, straightforward. Obviously, we've got to get this tail out. I'll show you the tool that I use to get these out. Really good tool to get. Yeah, let's get this old one off and I'll show you. So old one's off. This one got to take the tail out. It's a Waffenberg tool. So yeah, you put it in one side, it'll go one way, put it the other, it'll go the other, because it's like a ratchet. And just put it in, like a push down. Yeah, so taking these tail out, an absolute breeze. So with a new tail, we're going to do an old school, PTFB, we don't use rapid blue stuff, if it's an old fitting. Just get any moisture or dirt in there, rapid blue won't work, so PTFB is the better option. I've actually done, because that pipe keeps wanting to drop under the floor. I've actually tightened that nut on, undone it, just so it's got a holding onto that pipe. And then we can get that onto there. And then for you eagle-eyed viewers, you'll notice I had to cut the pipe. I'll show you why. I've never actually seen this before. Let me tighten that on and I'll show you. So I've cut it off because that was the olive. And it had like uh, this owl ring sitting on top of it. Like that. I've never seen that before. I'm not an olive on a tail of a, yeah. I'll just cut it off and uh, start it again. That's it all in. Just got to clear my nuts. Actually, you got clean nuts. Yeah, that's the that tail of all changed. Fill system back up. Before I do that though, what have I got to do? Turn off the bathroom, lad, to get the in between. Always forget to do this, but not today. See, so, yeah, that one's off, so I'll get the in through the top. Right, so we just finished bleeding the rags upstairs. I should only have to do them. I'm just going to put this up just over one. Seems a nice drain off there for us to use. You should get that over one. I think what I'm going to do is run the heating. Get it up to temp. Make sure there's no leaks up to temp. Well, that's running in a good time. Start packing away, get all the stuff on the van. Have a cup of coffee because customer just made me one. So yeah, test that to temp. That should be job done. Other than the inhibitor, got to get an inhibitor in. So last job of this, get some in between the system. I'm gonna say, I'll just do it from the tail well. If I've got one, it is a lot easier. I'm gonna spill in there. Look at that, steady. A bit of a tip when you're doing a hip, but I'll put it that way with the arch facing that way, and it won't look. 
do the other way then, and it will plug, yeah. That's all done, let's get that back on, turn this rad on, get bled. There we go, that's it all getting warm now. Lovely, nice new radiator, it's lined up perfect that side, so a bit of an extension behind that one. Yeah, I'll say the customer's got a choice whether I'll get all the full boards up and just swipe a little palm extension there, they're happy with that, so. Yeah, it's job done on that. There we go, no dramas this week. I know sometimes my videos just look like drama, but I'll just capture what I do in that week, pull it out there, and that week there's no dramas. But hopefully some of the hints and tips in there, some of the tools that I'll use, they'll help you out along the way. And so massive thank you to you all again for your support. Honestly, I really appreciate it. And I'll catch you on the next one.